spell it out the same. <laughs> Greatest of all time. <laughs> Wasn't Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Listen to this. Let's, let's keep going. Jesus believes in the power of the blood. I want to say that. You see, once upon a time, maybe the church didn't have all the technology we have now. Maybe they weren't as dignified nor as hip. But there was a time the church made much to do about the blood. I mean, them old saints may not have known all you know. They didn't have the Bible on their phones. They didn't even have phones. But they would go out in the middle of a sun-parched, dry Oklahoma summer, speak to a cloudless sky, call for rain, and rain would come. And there are stories upon stories upon stories of it raining only on the believer's farm and not on the believer next door. See, I'm telling you something. Listen, we may have advanced in many ways, but in some ways we have gone backward because we make much to do about our dress. We make much to do about our music. We make much to do about our technology. We need to go back to being simple saints and make much to do about the blood because it's the blood that covers the mercy seat. It's the blood that paid the price. It's the blood that was poured out. And our high priest believes in the blood. There were some priests that didn't believe in the blood of the sacrifice lamb. Talk, man. But don't you know that when Jesus entered in, he wasn't carrying the blood of an animal. No, 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 no. <sighs> As he poured out that substance that flowed freely out on the mercy seat, he believed. He believed it was enough. Yes, you see... Paul, Paul would call the law the law of sin and death, right? Not that the law gave birth to sin, but the law exposed it. Yeah. It was because of the law that man knew what a sinner he was. Yeah. The Bible also teaches that life is in the, the blood. blood. That's right. Life is in the blood. Yeah. So if life is going to cover death, then the blood has to be poured out on the mercy seat that contains the law. And so as Jesus stood there <laughs> and he poured out this substance and it covered the mercy seat, life covered death. And not like it did with bulls and goats and lambs. This blood ever lives. It's there. It's there to this day. And it's covering, this is, listen, 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 this is the reason why every time you transgress, why every time you fall short, why every time you are incomplete, you're covered. Yeah. What you did, it's covered. Yeah. This is the reason why all you've got to do is say, Father, I'm sorry, I'm, and you keep, you don't quit, you don't retreat, you don't, oh, well, Pastor, you don't know what I do. Did I? There's no hope for me. Yes, there is, because there's blood on the mercy seat. But, Pastor, I cheated on my wife. I did this, I did that, I did the other. There's blood on the mercy seat. And your sin, past, present, and future, is covered. That's why it's, it's grace. So amazing. He's covered every sin that I did. And I got to tell you, I know some of you were good sinners. I was good. I come from a family of sinners. We practice. No, y'all, y'all looking at me so holy. You know you did too. When you come from a family of sinners, you learn to sin and you refine it. You get better with it. Right? Every sin I ever committed, that blood covered it. 
anything I might do and I ain't seeking to do it. But if I do, I know it's covered. So I simply go back and say, Father, thank you for the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It cleanses my conscience from all condemnation. And there is now therefore no condemnation. Why? Because the blood covers the mercy seat. Ah. He believed it was enough. It was enough for everyone. It was enough for every time. It was enough for all people. Jesus, listen, I, I, I don't know if I can say this emphatically enough. Jesus believes. Jesus has faith. Mm. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 12. Listen to this. I'm reading it to you out of the New Living Translation. With his own blood, not the blood of goats and calves, he entered the most holy place once for all time and secured our redemption forever. Under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and ashes of a heifer could cleanse the people's bodies from ceremonial impurity. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. For the, by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sins. That is why he is the one who mediates a new covenant between God and people so that all who are called can receive the eternal inheritance God has promised them. For Christ died to set them free from the penalty of the sins they had committed under that first covenant. Go to Revelations chapter 1, verse 5. I'm reading it to you out of the literal translation. And from Messiah Yeshua, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead. Jesus was not the first person to come up out of a grave. You all know that, right? Lots of people had been raised from the dead physically under the old covenant. But Jesus was the first to ever come back from the dead spiritually. Yes. Yes. He was the firstborn again. Come on, man. Come on, man. By being first, he's the greatest. Yes. He's the inheritor of all things. Yes. This is why the kingdom is his, yes. and he's the king of kings yes. and the Lord of lords, because as the first, he has preeminence. Yes. But he's also the first, meaning there's going to be more. And more and more and more, and more, and more, as we get our act together and quit squabbling over little denominational differences and just begin to proclaim Christ the risen Lord, we are going to transform the kingdom of darkness by redeeming back the lost and making them children of light. I think it ought to be our goal to depopulate yeah. darkness. Yeah. Are y'all with me this Come morning? On. Come on now. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. I know we all want a Bentley, no, but it's better to get a whole bunch of people born again. Y'all yes, yeah. listening to me? Yes, I mean, there are blessings, there are perks, but let's not put the perks before the purpose. Amen, the purpose is to preach him. Amen. <laughs> then you'll get the... I remember one time, is this okay? I know I need to hurry, but I got five hours. At least that's what my iPhone says, and Siri never lies. <laughs> one time I was, I was in a big pastor's conference, and I was the only missionary there. And my wife and I were full-time missionaries at the time. And as they were parading, the pastors were parading across the stage. They were all talking about their new jets and... Their $50,000 watches and all these things. And, and I found myself, and listen, I'm not anti-prosperity. I ain't anti-prosperity at all. I believe that, I believe God wants you healthy. He wants you wealthy. And he wants you well-resourced so you can do everything he's called you to do and not have to worry about nothing. Really, the word prosperous means to have more than enough for the journey. Right? So you don't run out when you retire. First off, as a saint, you never retire. 
You might retire from BMW and IBM and PLP, but you don't retire from the kingdom. Amen, brother. Hmm? So I was, I was, I found myself as a missionary getting kind of perturbed. Righteously indignant, you should say. And I said, God, I don't understand this. I know some of these guys are giving me $10 a month. And he's talking about his $50,000 watch. And I'm just, I'm just talking to the Lord, keeping it real. I said, Lord, do you know how many books I could print for 50 grand? I could change a nation for 50 grand. He's got a $50,000 watch and giving me 10. I ought to send him that money back. I didn't do it. I might have been indignant, but I ain't a dumb dumb. And, the, you know, this is what the Lord spoke to me. And I want you to hear this. The Lord spoke to me so clearly. He said, if you'll restore to me the treasures of the earth, I'll give you the trinkets of the earth. And I understood instantly the Lord saw the watches and the cars and the jets as trinkets. He's not at all concerned. You see, we get all constipated. If a preacher's driving a nicer car than we think he ought to. It's a trinket. It ain't going to last long, right? And we don't know how many treasures he's redeemed back to the kingdom. But here's the thing that we ought to do. Focus on bringing to him the treasures of the earth. Who's the treasure? Bring him treasures and he'll give you trinkets. The trinkets ain't the goal. The treasure's the goal. But we need to understand we need to be like our father. Well, you know that preacher. So what? God will take care of that preacher. Right? If you don't like what they're doing, just don't give them no money. Then you ain't got nothing to say. All right. I didn't mean to meddle. He's the firstborn. I don't know how I got from firstborn to that. He's the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood. Then go to Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. That's how I got there. Colossians chapter 1, verse 18. He is also the head of the body, the church, and he is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he himself will come to have first place in everything. This, listen, after he came alive again and he was declared righteous, he entered into heaven to pour out his blood upon the mercy seat so that he would not be the only one born again, but the first of many brethren. And I imagine as he entered in, now y'all are going to have to use your imagination and you need to pray for me because although this looks like blood, it's actually red colored water and I'm see I know I'm if I spill this I will not be talking about Jesus I'll be talking to Jesus so don't amen me too loud and get me all fired up help me father I asked Brad I said Brad when you're carrying that be careful man the life you save may be mine But I imagine as Jesus entered into heaven and he was carrying some type of sacred container filled with his own blood. And I wonder as he entered in and he entered into the gates, I wonder if there wasn't a lot of thanksgiving going on. I don't know, maybe it was a place that was sacredly quiet but I tend to think that the Psalms was a prophetic. And as he entered into the gates of heaven, I think the host of heaven began to give thanks. Because as I said, heaven had been waiting for, since before time began for him to show up. The sacrificial lamb who had become the high priest. And as he entered into the gates to the thanksgiving, I imagine he walked into the courts with thunderous praise. And as he walked through the courts, I wonder if he went, left that all behind to enter into the Holy of Holies, to do something that had never been done before. 
to go walk up to the mercy seat. As he held not the blood of bulls and lambs, y'all. Do you know why Jesus has great faith? Because this was his blood. No one knows more than the price that was paid than the one who paid it. And so he began to pour out upon the mercy seat for the sin, for the disease, for the poverty. Everything was being covered. And it covered the mercy seat. That would have been enough to redeem you. But I think maybe he thought about the trials and the troubles. Let's cover that. Oh, wait a minute. When the doctor tells you about that disease, that sickness that's uncurable, it took out your mama, your daddy, your grandma, your grandpa, and Uncle Joe. Jesus, well, I think I'll cover that too. And he poured every trial, every storm, every problem, every pain, every sin, every transgression until the container was completely empty. And forever and a day, y'all getting this? Forever and a day, that blood sits up. It's, it's never going away. We'll see it someday if they let us in that place. His blood covers. And this is the reason why. Listen, the Bible says he's a faithful high priest. That he ever lives to make intercession. Why? Because that's his blood. He knows of its purity. He knows of its potential. He knows of its power. So he lives to pray, to intercede. And I heard a preacher say long ago, and I'm bringing this to a close in about four hours and 16 minutes. I heard a preacher say long ago that he made a habit of setting himself in agreement with Jesus. You know, the Bible says if any two of us agree as to touching anything. And when he said that, I thought, I don't know if that's theologically correct, but it might be. So I'm going to assume it is. And I'm going to set myself. And I I just made a habit from that day to this. Lord, whatever you're praying, I agree. Because I know that nobody prays for me the way he prays for me. Nobody intercedes for me according to the will of God the way he does. So, Lord, whatever it is you're praying at this moment, I agree. And though I don't know everything, I do know this. He's praying that my faith would not fail. I agree. No matter what trial, no matter what storm, Cleve, I agree. My faith will not fail. I know he's praying that I'd make it to the end. And I agree. I know he's praying that I would strengthen my brethren. And I agree. I know he's praying that no obstacle, no trial, no storm would cause me to shrink back. And I agree. I agree with my high priest. Do you? Do you make a habit of when you're going through the trial saying, Lord, I know you're praying for me, and I agree with you. Because if we agree as to touching anything, we have it. So I have what he's praying for me. Shundily undie. He prays, I receive. He ever lives. I, I need to... Whoa. Thank you, Lord. That's wonderful, brother. That's Hebrews 7.25, in case you want to look it up later. I need to keep going. Listen. <sighs> He's our high priest. He's our advocate. He's our lawyer. He's our intercessor. Can I read you a few verses before we go home for the day? 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and righteous to condemn us, to lord it over us, to belittle us, to make us feel ashamed. Is that what it says? No, no, no. We got preachers to do that for us. But we have an intercessor who is faithful to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness he's good first john chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 my little children these things write out you that you may not sin 
And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. Mm. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 22 says he's the surety of the new covenant. Listen to this. A surety is a person who takes responsibility for another. No wonder the Bible says he will perfect that which pertains to you. That he watches over his word to perform it in our lives. Why? Because he is the surety of the new covenant. He's taking responsibility for you. This is, listen, listen, this is why when someone or something comes against you, they come against him. He doesn't, can, can are y'all, y'all can give me five more minutes? He doesn't expect you to make, make it on your own. He never, did, he, listen, he did not birth you in the born again experience and then abandon you to see if you'd make it. I heard a pastor say one time, he said, he said, oh, we just get them saved, and if, if, they, if, it took, if it was real, it'll take. That's like giving birth to a baby and throwing it in a dumpster and saying, well, you know, what if it's strong enough, it'll make it. No, they put you in jail for that. Jesus didn't birth you and then abandon you. You're not an orphan. He watches over you. He's your bread provider. He's the healer of your body. He's the one who's watching over you, praying for you, so that you have no excuse not to make it. You can make it. You understand what I'm saying? Because he's praying. I'm without excuse, oh man, if I fail. Oh. Psalm 138, and I'm bringing this to a close. You've heard it before, and it's as meaningless now as it was then. (laughs) Psalm 138, verse 7, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. You will stretch forth your hand against the wrath of my enemies, and your right hand will save me. The Lord will accomplish what concerns me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, is everlasting. Do not forsake me the works of your hands. 1 Peter 5 says he will perfect, confirm, and establish you. In closing, Jesus is the guarantee, the guarantor of the entire New Testament from Matthew 1 to Revelation 22. I'm going to paraphrase Psalm 23. Go ahead and stand to your feet if you would as you hear this. Cleve, prepare yourself to close us out, sir. I hope your faith has been strengthened. The clearer your picture of your Messiah, the greater your faith will be. The Lord is my shepherd, my bread provider. How can I want? He causes me to lie down in green pastures. I live in divine affluence. He knows every need of my life, and so I lie down under his protection in green pastures of plenty. Sweet water flows by me, clear and sparkling as a crystal. I am the Jesus cared for one. He restoreth my soul. That means if any that means if there is anything that has frightened me, caused me to worry, filled me with fear, he restores my soul. He pulls me out of my fear and dread and into rest and quietness. And he leadeth me in the paths of this new kind of righteousness where I do not fear my enemies. The paths of righteousness are the paths of the new creation. And though I walk in the realm of spiritual death where everyone is ruled by the adversary, I shall fear no evil. For I hear when he whispers, Lo, I am with you always. even until the end of the age. Thy rod of protection, thy staff of plenty, they comfort me. I am shielded, I am cared for, I am hidden away in him. He is my protection. But hear this, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I'm done.
Shut that off for me. Yeah, thank you for catching it. We ain't near done. But think about this. He prepares a table for you in the presence of your enemies, meaning they can't touch you. They are so powerless that you can sit down and dine and be safe. As we continue in this study, we're going to talk about how he healed the broken heart on the road to Emmaus, his ministry to Timothy, his restoration of Peter, his preaching to the saints in captivity until he arose in a cloud and went to the Father. Father, we stand in awe this morning of Jesus Christ. Never has there been one like him. Never will there be one. Our faith is in you alone. Your word is enough. Yes, it is. Your spirit is everlasting. So, Father, this morning we declare we forget not and we fear not. We are the faith-filled ones who believe that every promise every dream, yes. every word ever uttered from the mouth of God will come to pass. Yes. In no way and no how will we come up short of that which you have declared. No. For Father, we will never stop moving. We will no. never stop pressing. We will never shrink back. But in faith, we will keep moving forward yes. for our Messiah, yes. our Savior, our Yeshua HaMashiach. Yes. He prays for us and intercedes for us. And in closing, we declare we agree with Jesus. Yes. Amen. God bless you, Pastor Cleve. Thank you for watching today. For donation of any amount, we would like to offer you an audio CD of today's message in its entirety. Just contact us here at Real Life Church using the information that is on your screen. For donation of any amount, an audio CD of today's message in its entirety. Just contact us here at Real Life Church.